Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. And first of all, let me say thank you all so much. The last time that I asked for your help, all of you really helped. The free course video is easily my best performing video, getting over 300,000 views in the first month. That's all thanks to your help, so thank you all so much. I generally hope you have enjoyed the course and it has helped you on your own game dev journey. It has over 20,000 likes and 3,000 comments. I've answered as many comments and questions as I could. Like I mentioned in that video, that course is really just part one, making that complete game in single player. And now I'm almost done with the second part, which is adding multiplayer to the game. I'm still editing and finishing up some things, but the plan is for the multiplayer course to come out next Monday. So the way I need your help is the same as before. When you see this video in your YouTube timeline or suggested videos, go ahead, click on it right away, then hit the like button and watch the video. That's it. If enough people do that, then YouTube won't push that video so that tons of people can learn how to make multiplayer games. Here's an overview of everything we're going to do throughout the entire course. So first we will begin by taking a brief look at the starting game. This is what was made completely from scratch in the single player course. So here we're just going to do a quick overview as a refresher to see how all the code is set up. Then we're going to begin by installing netcode for game objects. This is Unity's official multiplayer solution. We're going to install the package and do the basic setup with all of the settings and spawn a player object. After that, we're going to begin by synchronizing the player movement. And also at this point, we're going to talk about one extremely important thing in multiplayer games, which is server authoritative versus client authoritative. With the movement synced, we are then going to synchronize the animations. This one is pretty simple to do thanks to the built-in components. Next, we're going to synchronize our first proper gameplay logic. We're going to begin with the delivery manager. So we're going to synchronize how the recipes are spawned, make sure only the server spawns them and all the clients see the same list, and also synchronize delivering the recipes either correctly or incorrectly. After that is just a quick lecture to fix the selected counter visual. This is something that showcases one of the many differences between making single player games and multiplayer games. We need to think in different ways, especially because in multiplayer we no longer have just a single player object. Then we're going to synchronize picking up objects. This involves learning how to spawn objects on the network so that all of the players can see it. After learning how to spawn them, we're going to synchronize the kitchen object parent so that multiple players can hold objects and everything is correctly synchronized across the network. Then we're going to synchronize the plates counter, make it so that only the server spawns plates. Then for the trash counter, this one involves learning how to destroy network objects. After that is synchronizing the cutting counter. So this one will involve thinking about what parts we need to synchronize and what logic can be just local. Then for the stove counter, for this one, instead of using RPCs, we're actually going to use a network variable. The server will keep track of the stove state and sync it to the clients. Next is synchronizing the logic for adding ingredients onto the plates. After that, for an optional design question, we're going to implement some player collisions. Then we're going to synchronize the complete game state. So waiting for all of the players to be ready before starting the game and also synchronize the game timer and game over. Next, we're going to learn how to deal with pausing. So do we allow it or not? In this case, we are going to allow it and all of the other players must wait until everyone is unpaused. Then for something very important, which is how do we handle disconnects? How do we clean up all the objects so the game doesn't crash when a player leaves in the middle? Related to that are late joins. So how do we handle a player that joined after the game has already started or should we even allow that? Then comes a really important and relatively complex lecture. In this one, we're going to handle the complete connection scene flow how we begin in the main menu in single player, then we have an online lobby. After that, we create the netcode connection and go into the character select scene. Then when all the players are ready, we then go into the main game scene. And after that, just play the game as normal. This is one of the most important lectures in this entire course. After that, with the connection flow working, we're going to build out a nice character select scene. This is one of the main things that I saw people ask about in my netcode video. So we're going to make a nice scene where the players can join and customize their character. Next, we're going to build the game lobby so the player can create a lobby or join one. Then we're going to implement Relay in order to allow our players to connect to one another easily without having to open ports. Next, we're going to talk about some more Unity multiplayer tools, dedicated servers with game server hosting, Matchmaker and Vivox. After that, we're going to talk a bit about all of the tools at your disposal to test your multiplayer games. Then just before the end, we're also going to add a really important option. We want the game to work in both multiplayer and single player. So we're going to make it so you can basically bypass all of the multiplayer connections and play in an offline single player mode. And with that, everything is done. So we're going to inspect the final game and have some fun. Okay, so that's the course. As you can see, it involves tons of things related to multiplayer. It involves synchronizing tons of data, handling scene management, learning about RPCs, network variables, how to handle disconnects, reconnects, how to make a character selection scene, use Unity Lobby, Relay, and so on. 
It's a very complete multiplayer game, and again, everything step by step. If you haven't yet seen the single player course, then go ahead and watch that. This multiplayer course starts off exactly where the single player course ended. There's no code that was written off screen. And if you have seen it, then you can go watch my netcode for game object video in order to prepare for the multiplayer course. Basically, the course is structured the same way as the single player course, meaning I assume you are familiar with the basics. So in there, I assume you know how netcode for game objects works. I will explain things as I use them, but I will assume you know the basics like what is a network manager, network object, RPCs, and so on. This has been a ton of work, so I really hope it helps you achieve your dreams of making a multiplayer game. Personally, I'm definitely looking forward to having some more calm days next week. I've been working non-stop on these two courses for so many months now. Just like with the single player course, I'm also making this one a completely free course. I want everyone who wants to learn how to make multiplayer games to be able to do so. In order to reach as many people as possible, I just need your help to click, like, and watch the video. Hopefully this one will also do very well in the YouTube algorithm. And beyond that, also just like the single player course, this multiplayer portion is also completely free, although I will also make it a regular course on my website. But I want to be very very clear, there's absolutely no difference between the free and paid version. Both have exactly the same content, so there's absolutely nothing behind any paywall. I just made that just in case some of you find the course helpful and you'd like to support it directly. And of course the YouTube video has regular YouTube ads, whereas the paid version has no ads. But on the content itself, all of that is exactly the same, so consider that essentially a donation if you can afford it and if you really like the course. Alright, so once again, thank you all so much for your help with the single player course, I really hope you liked it, and I hope you will also learn a ton from the multiplayer course. Stay tuned for the video coming out next Monday, and I'll see you next time.